Basically, the bunks are very narrow deliberately because at sea you don't want a wide bunk uh, because you roll around in it too much. And also, the storage behind them here, so a little bit of storage, so it makes them slightly narrow in some, but that makes it a very comfortable sea berth. Just like that. If it's very rough, you do the third one up. A couple of cushions. I've got three because I'm not to here. And the sleeping bag. I'm six foot four and I fit in very comfortable indeed. I'll show you if you like. Please do. I'll take my shoes off. This is. Well, you wouldn't normally go to bed with your shoes on. No, no. But even if you go to bed at sea, you should always take your trousers off so you've got something warm to put on and cap your sleeping bag up. I'm extremely comfortable here. This is the skipper's bunk because it's on the port side, hove to on a sub attack. You are very comfortable. Good night, Vienna. Peter, what's so special about this twister? Well, this twister, I've sailed this twister all her life. She was my father's before mine. She was built in the back garden house where I was brought up as a kid from about 11 to about 22. And after my father stopped sailing her, couldn't sell her any longer. I bought it from him and I've been selling her ever since. So if it goes there, it goes there because it always has gone there. I have changed her, she has been updated, but she's a lovely boat. I enjoy sailing her and it's history now. You know, it's, you, it's very rare to be able to say I've sailed the boat all her life. So we're talking over 40 years, aren't we? About 45 years, yes. It's sort of, her birth was a bit sort of protracted because she was built in the back garden. Is she born when the hull arrives in the back garden, or when the hull finally goes in the water, or when she's finally finished? So it's a bit of a it's about a three-year build project for my father and my brother, who did most of the work. Um, I I was away at university for some of the time. I did the little bits. I put the engine in and the and the wiring, but all the woodwork and cabin top, all that was done by my brother and my father. Um, the division of labour was that my father did the inside. Um, the joinery bits inside, and my brother, who was probably the more capable of the two, uh, did the outside, which was the cabin top, put on the glass fibre hull and deck that had been bought from Tyler's. And she was built in the middle of Middlesex, Yes, and in, yeah. ended up in the Caribbean. Yes, um, my father, when he retired finally, decided that the boat it wasn't exciting enough for him. Quite not why, I don't know, because he just discuss the midnight summer up there occasionally and the parties that go on. So when he was 72, he ran away to sea and took the boat to the Caribbean. Uh, he sailed her gently down to uh, Portugal. Uh, I joined him out in Bayona in Spain in the Rio as we had a week together. He then went on to Tenerife, and then from Tenerife he and another chap sailed the boat down to the Cape Verde Islands uh, and then across to uh, Prickly Bay in Granada. Uh, 22 days it took them. I then joined my father out in the Caribbean because he was out there for six years as a dutiful son. You had to go and see the boat and uh, between us we sailed the boat between Antigua and uh, Trinidad and Tobago. People around Twisters uh, love their boats and a number of people have got Twisters have had them for many years and have lavished money on them. Uh, when she came back from the Caribbean she was in a sad way and one of the things we could have done is just done the minimum amount and just sailed it as a boat. But I had some money at the time and we decided to do it properly. So we painted the hull, we had the cabin, uh, the, sorry, the cockpit was professionally rebuilt by the Elephant Boatyard, an excellent job. Uh, we had her epoxied and we did a lot of work on her that we paid for, bought new sails. So we spent about enough money, if my wife sees this, could be in trouble between us. Um, probably been cheaper to take a taxi around the world than to if you wanted to sail around the world but it was money well spent it's lasted a long time and hopefully this boat will pass on to somebody else in good condition is it just the emotional attachment that you've got with this boat 
that is why you've kept her for so long? Uh, part of it's that certainly, but, but also it's a very pretty boat and it's really nice when you go into a harbour, people say, that's a nice boat. It's also because the boat sails incredibly well, which is very easy for one person to sail and very safe. Um, when I'm sailing to windward, in most conditions I can actually lash the helm. I did so the other day and quite comfortably. Um, for She held the same course for about three hours, something like that, without me touching her in seas in the channel. Uh, steady wind is what's needed. If the wind is a very variable, lashing the helm doesn't work so well. But otherwise, just sell itself. Tell me about the twisters. The twister was designed by a chap called Kim Holman, who was a very famous designer. Um, he only liked making pretty boats, and that was very important to him. He was asked to make a particular boat, which he did. He called it. The twi it was called the Twister of Mercy. And when they first launched her, she looked good, but they didn't realise exactly what they had until they raced her, and she started to win races like every race she entered near enough. And in that particular time, in, in the late 60s, 70s, um, the twister with a long keel, 28 foot 6, 5 foot 6 draft, eight, narrow beam, 8 foot beam, um, quite a small rig compared to the size of hull. Somehow, that small rig, quite large hull, sailed incredibly well and they cleaned up in races. Um, there was a famous occasion in the North Sea race, we race across the North Sea from England to Holland, which is about 100 miles, where the twisters annoyed the race officers by arriving with the class ahead of them and confusing the results. It was not good. The, this, when they realised they had a success, there were several built that cleaned up. One particular, called uh, uh, Cheetah, came down to Cowsweet from the East Coast, and uh, as they said when they came back, we marmalised them because everything she entered she won and nobody thought in cows and there was a rivalry between the south and the east at that time nobody thought an east coast boat could uh, win and twisters became very successful until the more modern Finn and Skeg boat was developed which frankly was faster in many conditions uh, I still like the twister because Finn and Skegs are much harder to sail in heavy weather much harder work to sail because you have to work harder to helm and I'm just quite comfortable with a long keel boat that will steadily, not plod on, but sail on nicely. Okay, the first twisters were built in wood, and roughly speaking, about 30 were built in wood in the UK and elsewhere. Two were built in Japan, for instance, one was at least built in the Marquesas, and several were built in Australia and New Zealand. Some were professionally built, uh, those ones I first mentioned have been, others were amateur built, uh, people either buying the plans from Kim Holman, or, as happened in some cases, we believe, copying the plans without paying the royalty but they're all welcome now to the twister class association because you know every twister is a twister where whatever the parentage the twister was then developed into a glass fiber hull it was always the intention if the boat was successful as it was being to build a glass fiber cruiser cruiser racer and a number of glass fiber hulls were built originally it was a hull and deck and the designer and the, the designer's brother had a boat yard and they put a wooden cabin top on top because making the mould for the cabin top and the cockpit was quite quite expensive. Subsequently, because of the success of the boat, a further batch of boats, quite a number, uh, were built with um, a fully glass fibre cockpit and cabin top. Approximately 90 were built like that. Approximately 30 or so hulls, uh, not quite sure exactly again, but 30 hulls were built whereby owners, people like my father, bought the hull or the hull and deck and fitted out inside the boat. So, of all, overall, there are about 230 twisters um, all over the world. There's certainly one in California, and we recently had a new member to the association, Twister Glass Association, uh, Casirina, which was, we only knew of as plans that were sold to a man in Australia many years ago. And she's a lovely looking wooden boat. When we first came down below, you said, oh, I'm going to sit there because that's where my father sits or sat. Yeah. Is, is, that, is your father still a big part of this boat for you? My father's obviously dead and he's been dead for so many years, uh, about 18 years, but in one way still alive because, you know, he made that, he made this. Uh, he's, certain things I do on the boat are, are an influence of my father, like my father was very important about keeping things clean and tidy and organised. This boat's got a no number of lockers because everything had to be put away, out of sight, clean and tidy. I just One of the fabulous sales I've had on this boat was I was coming back last year from Sherbrooke to Weymouth 
the, the sea was flat, which is quite important, but suddenly the wind came up, and I managed to get this boat going between six and a half and seven knots into Weymouth for five hours. I could, that was a fantastic sail, I have proof. I took a photograph of the dials, but that's the sort of thing a long keel boat can do under control that would be hard to do that in a, a modern boat on your own. Thank you.